So we ended up raising money actually before we graduated our senior year. And so you could say it was both very early, but it also wasn't really because we had been working on projects, as I said, for about a year before that. And so at that point, we had a very solid idea of what we wanted to do and what we were pitching to them. Um, it was early, though, in the sense that we didn't have paying customers at that point. One of the reasons we did decide to go raise money from VC, and we actually raised money from Draper Fisher Jorvetson, who <coughs> sponsors this, <laughs> um, is that we had, we had a lot of solid connections to VC firms actually through ETL itself, um, and then also through the Mayfield program, and felt because we were targeting companies, we wanted to do basically enterprise innovation software, that in order to approach them and sell that, we wanted to have someone behind us, someone backing us to give us some level of credibility in the space. And we felt, I don't know if this is true or not, but we felt that a VC firm would provide a bit more name recognition than would an angel. Um, and so that definitely helped us uh, in one case for sure, but who knows if it would have been the same otherwise. Yeah, in the end the answer is kind of, <laughs> was it helpful to have that name behind us? Certainly. Was it instrumental in being able to negotiate the uh, deals for purchase with the companies we were negotiating with when we were uh, considering being acquired? Absolutely. Was it necessarily critical for us to have gotten business customers? I can't tell you that. Um, I'm trying to think of what I can tell you. So we, we raised um, $500,000 of uh, basically <coughs> angel money. Um, one thing that's interesting about who we raised from is it actually came from the father of a friend of mine from Stanford who was an angel investor and had done a number of companies himself, was an entrepreneur, was a VP at SGI, um, and was a VC at Warburg Pincus, which is a large private equity firm. And um, uh, he basically through the, I think that, that speaks to the credibility of the Stanford network where his daughter thought very highly of our team. And um, that basically gave him what he needed uh, to invest in the company and trust us early on and let us raise uh, the amount of money that we raised. Um, it took us a month, I think Josh's point about it takes, it takes time to fundraise. Um, when we started, it took about a month to set up all the meetings. Um, and Bo, who is our, our angel investor, uh, actually set up uh, meetings with, I mean, the president of AMD, the CEO of VMware, who actually invested in the company, Paul Moritz. Um, the, the family behind the Boston Globe, the Taylor family, they invested in the company. It took a month to set up all those meetings and then in one week we just sort of like phone call after phone call after phone call. It was just nothing but phone calls for a week. Uh, and we raised our angel round on a convertible note. Uh, we can talk more about those financial instruments if you guys are interested. Um, and then that was enough credibility. We thought we needed that because we really needed it. We were a technology company, so we had a lot of technology to build. We needed to hire more engineers. We needed to pay our interns. We actually uh, brought on our founding interns uh, under the promise that we would pay them, having absolutely no idea if we actually would be able to do so. Um, so for the first three weeks, we actually paid them with our, sort of loaned them money from our own bank accounts, and then we actually happened to raise our, our angel money after that. Um, and then uh, after the first year, we accumulated the Washington Post and, and New York Times and, and Reuters as customers, and that was enough basis to raise our Series A of three and a half million from Clearstone Venture Partners.